Hello, this is Professor Scott Norman at Pittsburgh State University in the Department of Automotive Technology. Today, we're going to uh, take a, a, a in-depth look at the way a fixed orifice tube system operates compared to a thermal expansion valve. And so the way we're going to see how these two systems operate differently is by having a simulator I have behind me, and we're going to put the same problem in a fixed orifice tube system versus a TXV system, and we're gonna see what the gauge readings look like with the exact same problem. And so what we're gonna see is that these two systems uh, operate differently. And so the same exact problem that you put into either a fixed orifice tube or a, um, a, a TXV system, the gauge readings will show a little bit different readings. And that's because of the way these two systems operate differently. And so with the simulator behind me, uh, uh, it, it, it shares the same compressor and the, uh, the same condenser, the same uh, evaporator, the same amount of refrigerant. It, it, it shares everything except for the restriction. And so with the flip of a switch, I can either put um, a, a fixed orifice tube in the system or I could put a thermal expansion valve in the system. And so with a, any given fault, I can see how, again, these two different systems will react with the same type of problem. Okay, so right now the system is on a TXV system and the car or the simulator uh, just started up and you can see that the, the high side pressure is around 200 PSI and the low side pressure is, um, uh, looks like it's just a little bit under 20. It looks like it's like 18 and it's kind of dropping just a little bit. So what we're seeing right now is a normal TXV system and we're sitting here and kind of like letting it stabilize just a little bit as far as what a, um, a normal system would look like. It looks like high side pressure is dropping just a little bit. Uh, and it looks like right about now is when the restriction is going into the system. And so you can see the restriction dropping. And so the, so the low side pressure is uh, uh, going into a vacuum. And the high side pressure went from, let's say, 180 is dropping down to about 150. So again, the TXV is currently being restricted all the way. So again, the low side is going into the uh, vacuum. Okay, right there, it, it, the, um, the restriction uh, is, is no longer there. So um, we're watching the uh, TXV go back to normal operation. And uh, it looks like uh, high side, again, is starting to climb just a little bit. Okay, so right now I'm turning the, uh, I'm turning the cooling fans off. Uh, in fact, there's two cooling fans on this system, and I turned uh, one of the cooling fans off because uh, just trying to give it a, a little bit better heat load, um, trying to get a high pressure up just a little bit. So we're seeing high pressure climb up, you know, above 200 just a little bit. The low side is also coming up uh, a little bit, uh, you know, 18, 19 PSI, almost to 20 PSI. And so again, we're looking at a normal operation at this point in time. You know, this would be a normal day, you know, it may be 80 degrees outside, 85 degrees outside. Uh, the, the car is fully warmed up. Uh, you know, we're, uh, it looks like we're approaching, uh, you're getting a little bit closer to 250 PSI on the um, high side. But there we go right there. We just did the restriction again. If you notice when there's a restriction on the low side of the system, at the TXV, high side pressure does not go up high. It goes down low, so um, the big indicator is that the um, is that the low side goes drastically low to a vacuum, and the high side, you know, is kind of on the low side of normal, you know, around 150 psi or so. So if you had a restriction on the time and you turned on the air conditioning, you would possibly see that. Okay, right there, the AC just kicked off, and so when the AC kicked off, you could kind of see the. Um, the, uh, the the system kind of jumped back up a little bit, and and really the AC didn't qu uh, kick off there. Uh, we just uh, turned off the restriction. Is what we did. So now we have again a normal operation. Looks like high side is stabilizing just a bit under two hundred fifty. PSI and low side is uh, around 20 PSI and this is the uh, last time we can see the restriction so there we see we have a restriction in the system think of that as like spraying some CO2 on the um, on the TXV and the TXV is closing so as it closes we can see the restriction take place with the low side you know goes very very low into a vacuum possibly and then again high side is dropping down to the um, the low side of normal 
So dropping from 250 PSI to maybe uh, 175 there. And now the system is going back to normal operation. Okay, so, so now we're running the system again, but this time we're running it as an orifice tube system. And so if you take a look at it, at it the system is cycling from the, about 20 to 40 PSI. So think of this as, uh, you know, the system is, you know, maybe a code engine. Uh, both cooling fans are on right now, so so again, it, it's not getting a chance to build up any heat in the system. So we're cycling pretty fast. So again, cold morning conditions. Uh, uh, it, it, the engine's not fully warmed up, and you're getting quite a bit of cycling. But I want you to take a look at the cycling as far as the amount of on time versus the on time. So on time versus off time and, and the way it cycles. So again, this is a, a normal cycling, fast cycling, but consider it normal under a low heat load condition. Could be that you have low refrigerant. So there you saw the fan number two turned off to try to give it just a little bit better heat load <laughs> so it stops cycling. So, you know, if you start a car and it's cycling a whole bunch and you're trying to stabilize the system, I would open and close, sorry, I would open up the, the doors, open up the window, maybe put it on uh, fresh air uh, to try to give it a little bit more of a heat load so it stops cycling so much to try to stabilize the readings. Of course, the PCM could do that automatically by watching the uh, high side pressure transducer and turning the cooling fans from uh, low to high. So there we're seeing cycling is now, so this would be considered maybe like a, a warmed up system uh, on a mild day where you don't need a lot of air conditioning. So after it gets down below 20 PSI, it cycles off a little bit. You see high sides going up above 200. Now you can see the air conditioning stabilized pretty good there. So just by controlling the cooling fans a little bit, uh, we were able to stabilize the cycling on it. Obviously, if it gets above 250 uh, PSI on the high side, we'd probably want to kick on the high side fan at some point. Or the high speed fans, excuse me. Okay, so now if you take a look at it, and if you take a look at the cycling, now we have a problem. So if you take a look at the way this system is cycling, the system turns on for like one second and then it turns off. And if you look at how slow it, it, it equalizes up, so, so when you first look at this system, it appears like it's cycling like, like uh, the situation earlier where it was just like a, whole, a low heat load and it's, uh, and it's cycling an awful lot. But I want you to pay attention to is how when the cycle is the uh, clutch on right at 40 PSI, so you can see the low side when it goes up to 40 PSI, the clutch cycles on. The cycle is on for maybe like one second and then it turns off. And if you look at how long it takes for the clutch to kick back on, we're looking at maybe 10 seconds of off time for every one second of on time. So the cycling is backwards from a normal condition. You would rather the system be on for 10 seconds and off for one second. Well, this, this system is on for one second, or turned on for one second, and now it's off again. And so, so this system is also a restricted system. This is a restricted uh, orifice tube. But because it's a TXV system and the system cycles between 20 to 40 uh, PSI from, like, let's say, a low-pressure cycling cutout switch, uh, you don't see the system go all the way down to a vacuum. You see it drop really quick to, to 20 PSI, and then, it, um, and then it turns off, and then it slowly equalizes, comes up to 40 PSI. So, so again, this isn't a, a completely restricted system, but it's a, a restricted enough to drop... Um, pressure down pretty quick. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it uh, educational. 
Uh, I'm Professor uh, Scott Norman, and if you're looking for more automotive educational videos, uh, please uh, subscribe to my uh, Professor Pintain YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Have a good day.